It's going to uh, really, really celebrate the whole history of Vicious Rumors. It's going great. You know, unfortunately, we we live uh, all in different parts of the country. So most of the time what we do is like everybody prepares individually and then we get together right before the event and then just go over the fine little things. But we're we're in very close contact with each other. And and the great thing was, is that we were able to, you know, get a couple shows under our belt with Brian already this summer. And uh, they were strong shows. And uh, I'm really excited. You know, I, I've always loved the adventure and the, the experience and the people, the culture, everything about when we've gone to Japan. It's our third time. And, uh, and I just feel like after everything we've went through this year, good and bad, um, you know, the band is playing hard and we're going to finish the year in Japan at the climax of everything we've worked for. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be 62 years old here, uh, November 11th. And I, I, I feel like I'm playing with more fire right now than I ever have. And, uh, I've just, I'm so thankful to my band members and just to the, my partners and fans that have just, you know, kept, supported vicious rumors and 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 kept us uh, relevant in the game oh yeah we're putting together a very special uh show in tokyo two nights we came up we're gonna do something uh very like uh, soldiers of the night oriented one night and digital dictator oriented the second night but with all our Atlantic, uh, this whole year has kind of about, been about our uh, Atlantic box set, the Atlantic years. So we're playing a lot of classic songs off the Atlantic albums and a lot of these early uh, the first songs up in, off the first two albums. And now that we have Brian Allen back, we're also going to throw in you know a couple of songs off the Razorback Killer album. And it's going to uh, really, really celebrate the whole history of Vicious Rumors. Uh, we when we played those songs again at the HOA, it was so much fun, man. Playing like Blitz the World and Ride, the people just reacted great to it. It was really fun to play those songs after so long, and it really kind of made me feel like, God, why why have I not been playing these songs for so long? Gunner um, is a real real talented young guitar player. Um, he does does an incredible job of capturing the feel of Mark's guitar playing and Vinnie Moore's guitar playing when we're doing those Soldiers of the Night stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, just as well as bringing this whole kind of like aggressive, like, you know, he's got that, you know, youthful right hand uh, sort of uh, strumming, kind of like that chunking. You know, sometimes he'll play like our riffs with like a little bit like extra chunk in it and stuff. And and I, you know, for me, I love it, man. I, I love hearing it like that. It's just, it sounds fresh to me. And it's been great playing with him. Um, we've, I think we've really established a cool guitar chemistry over the years, you know. Um, amazingly enough, uh, I hired Gunner at 18 years old, right out of high school. You know, he's been in the band seven years now. When I look at these pictures of him when he first joined the band and he's like this fresh faced little kid. And then I look at pictures of him now and I just think, wow, we did a hell of a job on him. You know, uh, he's, he's constantly pushing himself uh, playing from classical to jazz to uh, to like Southern rock to even country music, uh, real like traditional picking and very knowledgeable on and uh and uh quite a quite a nice young guy so between him and i and larry and uh you know robin now we're all you know multi-years in the band and and brian you know coming back um he doesn't feel like someone new or anything you know i mean it's just uh it, it feels good though right? it's just kind of like you know putting on like you know your old pair of tennis shoes or something oh wait hey those feel pretty good you know if you really think of how old my soul might be then yes i do feel very young <laughs> when i was a kid all right when i was a kid growing up in hawaii 
people that were 50 years old were completely done. They were just, I mean, you know, it, it was over. And uh, so I, I think luckily for me and, and people of, you know, late, these later generations, uh, you know, music, uh, and we live, we live much younger lives, you know, uh, luckily today than we did, uh, you know, 40 years ago. I love, I love the action. I love the music. I, it, it's weird. I mean, I can still get excited about going to the airport. It's like ridiculous really, but, but I, I love the action and, uh, we, we just want to do it as long as we can do it well and, and, and play hard. And I remember like just showing up get from the airport and uh, getting, or like going to the train station and having like fans like waiting for us there. And I'm thinking to myself, like how on earth did they even figure out when we were going to be here? Like, you know, whenever we see people that have gone out of their way to, to meet us, you know, we always look, take a minute and say, hello. We, we always love to, to, to greet and meet people and, and stuff like that. And also uh, I remember that, that after the first show in club Kawasaki, we'd already done quite a long show. I think like almost two hours we were downstairs and, um, when we were relaxing and we were kind of celebrating, wow, this has been such a great experience. And then all of a sudden the promoter comes back and he's like, Hey guys, like, and we're all, Hey, what's up, man. And he's, uh, and he was like, no one has left the building, man. Will you guys please just come and play one more song? And I'm thinking to myself, like we have been down there for like 15 minutes already. Like I was like, are you kidding me? And I, I went upstairs and just put, you know, put my head around the corner and, Sure enough, the, the house lights are on. The place is still totally full. And we just went out and rocked a couple more songs. And it was just like, it was it was one of the, just the most incredible moments of my career, really. And then uh, after the second show, uh, we, we made a live album that night, the plug in and hang on. So we went to a recording studio, Mark McGee and I went to a recording studio, you know, we're doing like uh, putting the album together and doing some touch-ups and just listening to me, trying to make sure that everything was the way we wanted it. And, um, and then that situation, we also had an interpreter, which was a, a really unique, you know, situation. Like we'd never tried to be in a recording studio with an interpreter before like you know you're you know sometimes you use um metaphors when you're explaining something like i want i want this to sound like a bird flying away uh you know <laughs> or something like that you know so it's it's just funny when you when you bring in interpreters and stuff but uh of course the people that we've worked with in japan uh every time have been so professional and uh we made a great live record that night but i remember uh, we were up all night, back to the bullet train in the morning, off to Osaka to do the third show. And I remember like that was the night that I did two shows and a live album without sleeping. Probably <laughs> one of the most outstanding things is when we were in Osaka and it was 91 and the guys from Nirvana were staying there and they were just breaking and like Kurt Cobain was there. And Mark McGee and I were in the elevator and then all of a sudden the door opens and Kurt Cobain walks in, you know, and it's just like the three of us in the elevator, you know, they were already big, really big in America all over the radio, but it was, I think they were just kind of taken off in Japan. And, uh, you know, when he was just kind of wearing that dirty yellow sweater and stuff and, you know, just looked exactly the same. <laughs> And I just remember saying to him, like, you know, hey, you know, congratulations on, you know, all your success. And he just like, di he didn't even look at me. He just looked straight ahead and he just looked really sad on his face. And he just goes, it's everywhere. You can't escape it. And I was just like, wow, man, that's like, you know, it, that's normally what you want, you know, when you're trying to, to do it. But it was a, a little maybe a short insight into what was going on in the guy's mind, you know, but, uh, and then of course, later that day, we, there's like 50 people waiting for us in the hotel lobby in Osaka. And, uh, and I, and so we I were down there, we're signing stuff, hanging out with everybody. And all of a sudden someone comes out of the elevator and a big crowd, you know, a bunch of the people go over there and then they 
broke apart really quick. And I was like, Hey, what was that over there? And that was like, Oh, it was, uh, we thought it was someone from vicious rumors and it was the guys in Nirvana. So that was my 15 minutes of being bigger than Nirvana. 1991 hotel lobby, Osaka, Japan. First of all, I just want to say we love you. And for those of you who stuck with us all this time, you know, we, we salute you. We thank you so much. And for the new fans that are just coming in, welcome. There's always room for you. And, uh, you know, we're coming to do it right. Um, we're one of the last of our kind of, uh, of our style of metal. And uh, we're playing for blood every night. And uh, we just can't wait to see everybody. Come on out and celebrate heavy metal with Vicious Rumors on three epic nights that we'll all never forget. Hell yes.